Welcome to this care collab of the Dendrobium Victoria Regina, together with Attainable Green, Bananda, Nacimento, Orchids and Succulents, and with Honeybees and Orchids. That one is what we're talking about right there. That is my Dendrobium Victoria Regina. So I'm starting off with a little bit of a weird angle here, but I wanted to show you my location for her because this orchid is intermediate to cold grower. Now, when it comes to cold, I can do that only for like three months of the year. And then it gets hot and dry quickly. Here in Southern Spain, I do not have a lot of humidity during the summer and we can get up to 30, even to 40 degrees Celsius. And the wind is hot and dry. Nothing about this orchid tells me that that is an ideal situation for it. But here we are in southern Spain and she is rocking it. And that's why I'm showing you my location, where she's living. I am under a south facing patio. Light would come in right over here from that arch, straight in onto this orchid, depending on the time of year. So right now the sun angle is rising and rising. And with that, she is losing more and more direct sun than she would normally have during the months of December through January, where she has about seven hours of sun if the sun is out. And that can be a lot, often day after day, direct sun, because the angle of the sun comes straight in through those arches and she is sometimes high enough that even the curtain up there makes absolutely no difference. I have the curtain in order to protect the other ones, but from her height and angle of the sun, direct sunlight, a lot of it during the winter months where the sun is lowest in the sky. And then in the summer, you can see as the angle of the sun rises, the roof up here is full shade. And this is what I call bright light full shade, no direct sun for about seven, eight months of the year. But this is where she lives, even when there is hot winds. Just to give you an idea, and I'll take her down now and let's have a look, see closer up what's going on. All right, here we are, right up against the hedge. Thank you, Fernanda Nacimiento Orchids and Succulents. Thank you, Honeybees and Orchids. And thank you, Attainable Green, for joining me on this care collab. This is a super beautiful species from the Philippines. And as I mentioned, she actually prefers to be growing mainly, mainly in an intermediate to cool environment all year round, somewhat semi-deciduous. So she likes a lot of bright light, which I give her, and I don't actually move her from the spot that you saw earlier ever, except now when I'm filming her or I need to do some maintenance. I got her in uh, September of 19, and that was for me the perfect timing to buy an orchid that is cool to intermediate growing because I don't have to acclimate her in my hot summers, which is probably more stressful than anything for an orchid. So. I was very lucky to be able to get this orchid at the right time and then start to acclimate her when it was still warm enough for her liking, but it was getting cooler and colder throughout the winter. And then coming out through to the spring of 20, I was very hesitant to see if she would stay outside or if I would take her in and put her in my dining room to have her a little bit more protected from the hot temperatures and the hot dry winds that I experience here. My humidity in the summers is about 30%. And that is not exactly what this orchid likes. It wants it cool and it wants it wet. And I can't do that. So I was very hesitant, but I kept watching her and kept watching her to make sure I don't see signs of stress, as in too much leaf drop too quickly or any kind of stress that goes on with regards to is she growing roots or not. There's one thing to be said about why I'm growing her still on an organic mount with the moss that grew naturally. And that is because I have to learn to see if she can make it through my very, very drastic climate for her preferences. So I wasn't going to be messing around with any inorganic mounts that I normally prefer to use. 
get this orchid established first and then we can start to play around. I got her when she had all these little sticks here. There's two orchids actually. I was going to hedge my bets and make sure I bought two. So there's two pieces down here and they are only done what they normally do and eventually they will drop their leaves. And that is fine, that is normal, that is good timing. Same as with this cane right here, these leaves starting to yellow and drop off, that is normal. This cane bloomed for me and it might bloom again. And the others, well, those are just storage organs for her right now. So this piece here has two canes growing directly from the base. These are the ones that started in the winter of 19. As soon as I mounted her, she started to push out the canes. And then the other piece has two canes as well. And they continued to grow throughout my hot summer. Very much, I have to say, very, very slowly. They literally just sort of slammed on their brakes. There was no terminal leaf. There was none of that going on. So they're still in growth process, but so slow, simply because the climate wasn't to her liking at that point in time. But I kept keeping her in the location that you saw because what I want to do is know the maximum I can push an orchid in order to make it convenient for me, if that makes sense. So she stayed in that upper location throughout the summer and I went nuts with my sprayer to keep her really wet around the base. It must have been good because it worked. This moss grew during the summer of 20. And moss, we know, likes very wet and humid environments and cannot abide by strong winds. And I've got a mount covered in natural moss. So I'm really, really pleased that her location that we see is her forever home. Okay, if it gets crazy like we have a week of 40 degrees and hot winds, of course, then I will bring her in and protect her. But at this point, I'm really pleased that she can handle the location where she's at, contrary to what actually her preference is. Now, having her down here, I'm seeing some black spotting. And I shall address that very quickly. I'll be right back. This is my homemade concoction of garlic and alcohol. If this is a fungus, then I will be using another variety of water and garlic infused RO water. But for the time being, I'm just going to go with the alcohol version to see if I can stop it. Because if there's pests that I cannot see down here, then I want the alcohol to do its job and I want the garlic to become the repellent that they don't come back. I will only know that if I deal with a possible pest issue before anything else. While I do this, of course, she is not going to be in any kind of sun at all until the alcohol has completely evaporated. But we also saw from the location prior that she is now in bright shade. So no direct sun while this is going on. So I'm hoping it's nothing drastic because during the winter, she grew incredibly, incredibly well. The canes took off as from October, and I say took off for a species, that's quite something, because they were like down to here during the summer, and then they started to really, really speed up during the winter months. For me, that's conducive that she is not a slow grower. It's just the temperatures and what she can handle will make it either she grows faster or she'll slow down just to protect herself. I do fertilize right now, especially throughout these growing months with around 300 parts per million every morning. Straight away, boom, soak and drench the mount. And that was enough once a day during the winter months. We're coming now into somewhat warmer temperatures. And I, when I say that we can have 19 degrees Celsius, we can have 21 degrees Celsius, but the nights are still quite cool. So during the day now, I go one day fertilizer at 300 parts per million, next day plain RO water. I, I want to now start alternating because her major growth spurt has happened, 
even though she has not finished growing, as the temperatures now start to warm up, I don't want to be pumping any kind of minerals into the mount, which has a beautiful little ecosystem, and destroy that and burn it, because this is helping me a lot. I have no plans as of yet to take her off this organic mount. It's holding its own really, really well. And I'm gonna leave it there until such a time it starts to break down. And then we shall experiment with the Michael mounts or the Ninja mounts or the hybrid of the two. So yeah, I'm hoping to see some blooms this year. Possibly not from these canes. Maybe there'll be one bloom coming down from this cane right here. But these are too young. These are for next year. That's when they will bloom. But I'm really, really pleased because here's another thing. When I got her, this, let me see, am I, yeah. This one right here was a keiki growing on one of these canes down here, which I took off and just attached to the top of the mount. And it's a little bit slower, but a keiki, once it's off the mother plant, it is, for all intents and purposes, it's a seedling. So it's a little bit slower, but it survived. That is the most important part. So basically now I have three pieces of Victoria Regina on this mount. And I'm sure that for future enjoyment, I can secure myself this orchid as long as I make sure that I keep an eye on her when she's up there, not really under my nose. Because what I do is just spray her and I walk away. Now that I've brought her down, I don't like the look of these black spots, so we'll keep an eye on that. So yeah, Dendrobium Victoria Regina in Southern Spain without humidity and where it gets really, really hot. It works. Who'd have thunk? And while we're here, let's just mist the top part. Just one more time also to flush off any alcohol that may have landed on the moss so it doesn't desiccate the moss. My plan is to keep that moss nice and happy because it's doing wonders, wonders for my Victoria Regina. Thank you so much to the channels that have joined me on this Care Collab video here. Again, it was Attainable Green. They have videos in my description below. Fernanda Nacimiento Orchids and Succulents, and as well as Honeybees and Orchids. So I really, really appreciate their participation and the fact that they take time to do these videos together with me so that I hope there's enough variety of growing culture in several hemispheres all in one go to make a decision as to can you grow Dendrobium Victoria Regina or if you're having any issues. If there were any questions that were not answered in my video, it's possible the other videos will answer those questions. And if you have any questions for me in particular, then please feel free to leave all of that in the comments below. And I'd be really, really happy to elaborate on anything I may have not circled back to. <laughs> Thank you everybody so very much for watching. Your time is so appreciated. I say it, I mean it. Take care and please stay safe. Bye.